what's going on guys welcome back to another video we are out here on a beautiful day on the boat fishing local our target species today is uh, the California halibut um, our plan is to go out and kind of drift some areas we've caught them in the past with some live sardines and then if the wind picks up and uh, we're drifting too fast for the live sardines we're gonna try bounce balling today yeah so we're gonna cruise around try some spots we've caught them in the past uh, we did just have a kind of gnarly storm come through water temps dropped down to low 60s so they were 70 before the storm now they're at low 60s 62 right now so uh we'll see if we can find any game fish out here but main target is the halibut so we'll see how it goes all right guys so real quick i just want to show you how we like to set up our rigs when we're drifting for halibut uh, it's actually pretty simple. We used to use tri swivels, but what we have found is getting these line through little snaps. You can get these online or at Walmart, any tackle store has them. They're extremely cheap, uh, but we use these line throughs instead of the tri swivel because when you get bit, you can put it in free spool and that weight is going to be connected right here. One second, just got to tank that. So that weight. Is sitting down below right there when you get that bite you you have the ability to put it in free spool and that fish can swim away with your line and not feel the weight when it's a tri swivel it's all connected and it's very hard uh i noticed we were getting a lot of short bites because we weren't able to put it in free spool for a couple of seconds and let that halibut grab it swim down settle back down and make sure that uh it had it you know choked choked that sardine so we like using these here i just rig up a short little uh, I use 20 pound to the weight because if I get snagged on the bottom, I want the 20 pound to be able to break to just a little snap. So depending on how deep we're fishing, we can change the weight out easily. Um, anywhere from six to, you know, 16 ounces, depending on if we're fishing 20 feet out to, you know, 150 feet. Uh, but then we just go to a little barrel swivel. Obviously you gotta have the, the bead right there to protect your knot to a barrel swivel. And then I use 30 pound fluoro. And again, depending on what bait we're using, right now we have about five inch sardines. So I have a one knot regular hook to a little stinger hook. And this stinger hook, you can you can stick it on the back of the bait, depending on if there's a lot of grass or anything around, you wanna keep it up above. Um, or I like to pin it right on the anal fin. Uh, on the anal fin, it, it, the, the barb actually grabs a little bit there. So it's a lot harder for that sardine when it's kicking to kick out that, um, that stinger hook. You don't have to have the stinger hook. I think I'd say probably 75% of the halibut I've landed have come on that stinger hook though. So just something to kind of be aware of. Um, but yeah, super simple, really easy stuff. And again, doesn't matter what reel you're using. I just like using the, the Trinidad super smooth buttery reels, but that's just kind of the basis of our halibut rig. That sliding one, sliding little snap right there to a bead, barrel swivel to your leader. Let him run, let him run if you're running. What do we got, Jimmy? Keep it tight, keep it tight. First bite of the day. See, we just need to grab a beer. <laughs> Dude, it's beer 30. <laughs> it's running pretty good though, huh? Yeah, ran for a second. What does it feel like, Jimmy? I don't know, it doesn't feel like a blue thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite a bluefin. That was the last time I went out. <laughs> Here, you step behind me. Just in case it's a halibut. Little head shakes. Little head shakes. Yeah, you can tighten it if you need to. Come on, be a butt. That'd be sweet. <laughs> Quick and easy. <laughs> I see it on the graph. You can see it on the graph. You can see the weight and the fish going up. Really? Yeah. Watch, well, it's gonna be like a little tiny sea line coming yeah, up too. Is. Oh no, it's a halibut. Is it? Yeah. Try to step back and start walking back. I think that's evil, dude. Water. Pull yeah. oh, it towards me, dude. Nice! Oh, dude, that's but... a legal size helmet! <laughs> <laughs> Off the back. Dude. Here. A little angry. 
as the sea lion's coming too. Well, uh, that was our first bite of the day, so. <laughs> That's a good sign. I think we should just go home. It's like 9.30 in the morning. Yeah. Beautiful halibut, sick. Yeah, that one's, yeah, that's a beautiful album. There we go, baby. It looks like the, uh, the Rancor. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does. Right? right? <laughs> it looks like the Rancor. All the Star Wars nerds out there. Where's the hook? Oh, it fell out, dude. There you go. <laughs> Sick. Nice. All right, Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Look at that. First one. First bite of the day, and it's a well over keeper size halibut. We definitely don't even need to measure that one, but just for just for uh, giggles, let's see. All right, so right about there. That's a 32 inch halibut. Nice. 32 inch, dude. That's a beautiful halibut. Probably about 12, 15 pounds. Pretty nice good. Nice job, Jimmy. There you go. Thanks, dude. Sick. Nice. It's a bonito. What the heck? <laughs> That's why you got tangled. <laughs> what? What? Bonita eaters, aren't you? Yeah, we're drifting the bottom, and I just caught a bonito. <laughs> what the heck? Are bonita fish big. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, you know what? That's probably what's swimming down at that. Yeah, those fish that we're marking down there. Yep. So 62 degree water, and there's still bonito swimming around out here. Well, definitely uh leave this guy and put them on ice because these things are delicious got them right in the mouth with a stinger hook that's why we got tangled ben because the bonito grabbed yeah, it and was just swimming in circles all right fish number two funny we just marked some uh yeah look at all the bonito on the grab calico oh it's a dude that's a nice calico <laughs> that's sick on that tuna rig Cold yeah. sniper screwing around. Yeah, there's a bunch of bass. I guess that's bass on the graph. Nice, dude. Oh, I get that. So, what's that? Four species already today? <laughs> so, we're just cruising around with the trolling motor, trying to go about a mile an hour, uh, trying to dodge these lobster lobster pots. But, um, yeah, a bunch of mixed, mixed fish out here on this, on this little hard bottom reef right now. So, pretty fun stuff. All right, as Jimmy was winding his up so we could uh, set up the drift again, he had a bonito on there. <laughs> with that eight ounces of weight, they don't, uh, they don't feel like you can't really tell that they're on there. But what that tells us is that those bonito are off of the structure because when we were on top of the hard bottom, we weren't getting any bites from the bonito as soon as we got off of it and we're in the sand. Yeah, so we're gonna set up on that drift again because both my bait and Ben's bait had, uh, they're kind of torn up and it looked like halibut bites on ours as well when Jimmy caught his. So we're gonna go back on top of that spot and give it another shot. All right, we just dropped down again on another drift. As soon as I hit bottom, I got bit. I thought it was a bonito again because they're super thick right now. As I was like putting my bait out and letting, letting it slide down one foot at a time, I watched a bonito come up and, and take a nip at it. So I thought this was definitely a, definitely a bonito, but a little sand bass. Sandy. Those are cool fish. Cool fish. All right, tiny little sand bass. Cool fish though. Is that 100 pounds? I don't know how that account. Oh, really? That's why. All right, so we decided to make a move. We tried one other spot in that, that zone we were at there. Uh, we're trying a little bit shallower. We caught that fish in 65 feet, so we're in 50 now. Uh, we did mark a bunch of bait down close to the bottom, so I like what we see here, so we're gonna give this a little bit of time, but uh, we are definitely suffering from the uh, first drift curse right now. Got that nice halibut on our first drift, and now we're, we're struggling to get another bite, but we'll keep at it. You checking it, Jimmy? Jimmy just got a, a little... Uh, a little sculpin or something. It's perfect. I'm working like Probably random. A little baby halibut. Oh, nice. Here, what's the? Just, just bounce them, or I'll bounce them for you. There we go. A little shaker. Got them with the front one too. Oh, nope. Oh. Woo. 
point, it. Point two. Yeah, that, so it's just over 20 inches, just short. Again, when they're when they're this close, we did bring the net for when they're really, really close. We knew this one was short. See you, bud. Uh, we knew that fish was short, so we didn't want to net them because even with the soft nets, the halibut when they get in the net, they fight so hard and go crazy that they can uh, they can like mess their tails up. Their tails actually get cut by the net and it leads to tail rot. So those ones that you know are short, you don't need to use the net. Just pop them in, get the hook out, let them go. But halibut number two. All bonita right there. We're drifting for halibut. We're seeing marks on the bottom, but uh, definitely a lot of bonita around. Luckily, they're not messing with our sardines too much. We should probably check them though, just to be sure. Hey. They'll find them. All right, so I just got short bit there, guys. As you can see, that is definitely a halibut. Oh God, oh God. You can see the individual teeth. Uh, that raked that poor, poor sardine, but um, yeah, we just switched back to uh, where Jimmy caught his first good one, and that was our first drift over it. Just got short bit, so I think we're gonna box this area in. It seems to be the most productive. Hopefully, get one more. Uh, like I said earlier, if this if this wind picks up a little bit more, it makes it a little harder to drift effectively. Uh, with the live sardine, we'll switch to that bounce ball. All right, Ben's oh. on again. Dude, nice sand bass. Just dropping that Colt Sniper down. We're getting a lot of marks on the graph here. Obviously, we got our three rods out. Still drifting for halibut. Dude, that's a, that might be a keeper size sand bass. Let me see that bad boy. Sand bass are so rad. But it's crazy that we're going over all of these marks and sand bass with the, the sardines and not getting a single bite. Like barely getting touched. It's kind of frustrating, but nice little sand bass. I'm curious, dude, this one might be, he's probably just, he's probably 13 and three quarter inches, just like every other bass you ever catch. Oh no, dude. And you're stuck then. That's a keeper. That's a almost 16 inch sand bass. Nice then. But yeah, keeper sand bass. If we didn't catch that beautiful halibut first thing this morning, we'd probably keep this guy. But we'll let him go. You guys, or do you want to keep him, Ben? Right, see you, bud. Nice, 16 inch sand bass. That's cool. Guys, okay, so that's going to do it for today. We're going to head in and uh, clean that fish and then yeah, I mean, we, we put our time in. We went to our confidence spots, tried there, tried a couple new spots, a new technique that I need to fine tune a little bit. But um, sometimes you just don't get them to go. It seemed like a, I don't know, kind of like a slow pick on the fish because we were marking a lot of bass and stuff like that, but even the bass weren't committing to the sardines. But Ben would drop down the Colt Sniper and they'd react to that like reaction bite. He was just kind of yo-yo fishing it. But still amazing day out on the water, as you can tell beautiful day here what is it early november and jimmy with the big all halibut oh, nice yeah. the and he also caught the other short ben and i didn't catch a halibut today but that's how it goes sometimes but yeah we'll see you guys back at home we'll cut up that fish and then make something delicious all right back at home just gonna get a quick weight on this halibut uh it was 32 inches nice great halibut Just, uh, just shy of 14 pounds. That's kind of what I guessed with Jimmy yesterday. 32 inch halibut should be probably around 15 pounds. Uh, but yeah, nice beautiful halibut. We're just gonna run through and I'll show you guys how I like to play. I'll just do the top top line here real quick for you guys. And then um, yeah, we'll get it all wrapped up in paper towels and then we're gonna make something pretty delicious with it. All right, now we start with the, the head cut right here. down like that and then I'll trace make a really shallow cut just right along the spine right here I guess not the spine but just like the, the fin of the fish and you can feel it kind of bouncing off those little like little rib bones nice shallow cut
right down the middle. Cut the tail. And then from here, when you push down with your knife, you can actually feel the spine. And then you can let it guide the knife to either side. And just slowly kind of peel away. Same with tuna, I like to kind of start from the tail and work my way up because you can get this piece kind of lifted and you can stick your finger underneath there and lift that meat up and get a much better visual as you peel it away. If you guys haven't noticed already, I'm not like a speed fillet guy. I like to take my time. Make sure I get as much of the fish off as I can. Spend all that time and money out there trying to catch these things. Why I rush now, you know? that top top line on the uh, top part of the of the fish off to the side you do the same thing with the bottom once you've removed one obviously it's a lot easier to get that angle in get this bottom pulley off in no time Just a little bit right there, but other than that, pretty pretty solid job. We got our nice two big fillets. The bottom and the top. Just gonna skin these guys real quick and then do the same thing to the other side. that sorry I'll do, do the other one but got that skin right off right there that's a beautiful play um, and then I like to portion portion them out right we're gonna probably cook these in a little steak so that's it's a little bit thinner here so I'll go a little more than four fingers perfect right there And then I like to wrap these in paper towels, put them in Ziploc bags until they're ready to uh, to eat. This this is probably good if you change the paper towels daily, up to, I don't know, five, six days even. So no huge rush right there. to uh, vacuum seal these. That's a worm or not. But yeah, no huge rush to vacuum seal these if you wrap them in paper towels and change, change them daily. I know we're probably gonna eat them in the next three days or so, so whatever ones we're gonna eat, I'll wrap them in paper towels, put them in the fridge, and then we'll vacuum seal the rest. 
And of course, we got the scallop-like cheek meat. Can't forget that. All right, guys, back in the kitchen. It is a, a few days later. I was able to uh, vacuum seal most of that fish, and obviously there's three of us on the boat that day, so we split up the fish, gave some away to some other friends and family, but um, yeah, today I'm gonna make a quick little lunch with some of that halibut that I didn't vacuum seal. Left a few pieces um, just wrapped in paper towels so that I could make them, you know, the few few days following. Um, and I've been pretty busy. Uh, it's my birthday week, I guess, this week, and uh, we're all going camping for like four days coming up. So, been packing and getting ready for that trip, and then doing some family dinners and stuff like that the last couple days. So, just gonna make a quick little lunch here. Um, show you what we got. We got some fresh parsley, got a lemon, we got some jasmine rice, and then obviously we're gonna bust out that halibut real quick. But just gonna walk you guys through a quick little lunch with that. We got the one cup of jasmine rice, just gonna dump it in here and just gonna rinse it out maybe three or four times, try to get a lot of that, as much of that starch out as it can. See that water's starting to get a little bit clearer. All right, we'll rinse it one more time, should be good to go. It also gets out any, uh, I guess if there's any random particles in the, the bag of rice you got, rinse those out too. That's good enough. Now do a cup and a half of water. Good. Just throw that in the rice cooker. Just gonna cut a few little lemon wedges to throw in the pan with the halibut once I'm cooking it. Then obviously use the, the other half to squeeze on. Once it's done, got this nice halibut filet. Perfect portion size for a little lunch um, out of the fridge. It was wrapped in paper towels and you can see it sells that like nice iridescence. Beautiful piece of halibut. It's gonna be really delicious. Um, so that's been patted dry with the paper towel. Now I'm gonna hit it with some uh, garlic salt, a little paprika, pepper, and some Italian seasoning. And then we're gonna throw it on the pan here. We got some butter on a medium high heat letting that kind of heat up and we're going to throw the, the halibut on there Get a nice little golden crust on the outside it shouldn't take longer than i'd say six to eight minutes to cook because it is a pretty thin piece of halibut Yep, that's what I'm looking for right there. You can see that nice golden brown starting to form on the bottom there as that piece of halibut starts to cook. And I'm gonna flip it probably in two more minutes once I see that kind of opaque white line reach the center. Oh yeah, that's just about done. As you can see, there's that nice little char, little crisp on the outside, but the center is still nice. Looks nice and tender. It's gonna be nice and moist and juicy in there still. While this finishes up, I'm gonna plate up some steamed rice and just gonna lay this piece of halibut over the top of the steamed rice, pour this lemon butter on top of that, and then add the parsley and we'll be good to go.
Whew, that looks amazing. And there you have it. Quick little lunch, probably took me about 20 minutes to make, but the rice took the longest. It takes probably 15 minutes for that rice cooker to do its thing. Uh, only took about eight minutes of cooking, so. Yeah, nice healthy lunch right there. Who needs a <laughs> flame broiler when you can do this right at home with uh, fresh caught fish? All right, I'm excited to dig into this. I'm starving, packing up all the camping stuff all morning. Oop. Don't need that seed. Come here, bud. Middle here. Look at that. Nice flaky, beautiful white meat right there. You can still see it's nice and tender, nice and juicy on the inside. Give it a try. Mm. Man, that is good. Wow. Cooking it this way with just the butter and the lemon and not doing uh, usually when I cook fish like this, I like to add some like soy sauce or um, cook it in I guess, sesame oil, but cooking it this way is just like so like light and fresh, really refreshing. So really hot though. Mm. Perfect for lunch. It doesn't feel like a big heavy meal, you know? But, oh yeah. That is delicious. Looking forward to catching more halibut uh, as this winter season kind of progresses. Hopefully, hopefully we can find some squid beds at some of the local islands or even locally along the coast as this year progresses. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's the plan. I'm gonna focus on catching big largemouth. And then when the weather permits, go uh, dive for lobster, fish halibut, try to find some squid beds. But um, yeah, stay tuned for the next next videos. This winter season should be fun. I uh, appreciate, appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to finish this up and get back to uh, packing and get ready for the camping trip. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Later.